Hello students, welcome to MEC 1321 Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart. Today we're going to do some example problems from chapters 6.1 to 6.2 of the book. This focuses on the method of joints. Uh, we're going to split these examples uh, into three videos, and this is the first video. So let's go ahead and get started. Our first example is example 6.1 from the book. In this example, it asks us to determine the forces in the truss members and indicate if those members are in tension or compression. So our first step after reading the problem statement, let's go and look at the diagram that we're given. What do we see in this diagram? What are things that we are given? We see that we have an external force of 500 newtons at point B. We see that we're also given some dimensional information and angles uh, in this body, and that's about it. Uh, things that we see that might be unknowns, if we look closely, we can see we have supports. A pin support at point A and a uh, roller or a rocker at point C. Those are two uh, locations where we want to replace those supports with reactions. So now that we've kind of analyzed that uh, diagram that we're given, let's go ahead and create a free body diagram of the entire system. This is where we free our body from its constraints, from the uh, pin and the rocker, and replace those constraints with the reactions. So what we'll do is we'll take the same geometry we have here, we'll simplify it into just simple uh, lines and points. We'll put our knowns back in place, so the 500 newtons and the dimensions, and then we'll replace those supports with their reactions. At point A, since we have a pin there, uh, uh, rotation is free, but translation is restricted, so we end up with an AX and AY constraint. Uh, at point C, we have that rocker, uh, so we're free to translate in the X direction, we're free to rotate, but we can't move through the floor. So we end up with the reaction CY that's going upward, representing the floor supporting that rocker. So now we've got our free body diagram. Uh, let's go and write out what our knowns and unknowns are for this problem. This requires us to, to look not only at our free body diagram, but what we're asked to find. From our free body diagram, our unknowns are AX, AY, and CY, right? But from our problem statement, it asks us to determine the forces in the truss members. So these are the forces that are transmitted inside of the actual uh, uh, beam components of this structure. So force AB, force BC, so AB, BC, as well as force AC. Those internal forces, if we were to slice those components open, right? So looking at our free body diagram, as well as our knowns and unknowns, it looks like we have a 2D problem. So that gives us three equations of equilibrium. And the number of unknowns we have is one, two, three, four, five, six unknowns. If we have six unknowns and two equations, do we have a good problem that we can solve directly? No, we do not have a good problem that we can solve directly. There are too many unknowns for the diagram that we're given. If we're if we're gonna be talking about all six of those unknowns. Now, something to note is for this problem, we can directly find the support reactions, the AX, the AY, and the CY, using our free body diagram and equations of equilibrium. So we can solve, this is a 2D problem, there are three equations, there are three unknowns. We can solve for those three reactions but in this example, we're gonna find it's not necessary to go and get those directly. Instead, using the method of joints, 
and the rule that with the method of joints, if there's at least one known and at the max two unknowns, you can solve for the unknowns in a system, right? So for this case, rather than directly find the reactions, we are going to find those using inside the method of joints. So what is the method of joints? How do we apply this method? The method of joints is where each joint point, we could say almost call it each node in our structure, we can isolate those nodes, those points, and apply equations of equilibrium to the forces that are transmitted through those individual points. And when we do that, we can end up finding our, our unknowns, finding the forces that are transmitted through the members. In our case, we're going to do the method of joints, and we need to select a location that has at least one known and at the most two unknowns. We have three locations to choose from. Point A, point B, and point C. Based on not finding the support reactions, we don't know AX, AY, and CY, the only point that we can start from would be point B, where we have one external load, this 500 newtons, and at, at max, two unknowns, the forces uh, in, in uh, FAB and FBC, uh, right? So let's do that. Let's take joint B and let's create a free body diagram or a, 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 a free body diagram just for that joint point. So just for point B, let's create a free body diagram. So that's what we do. For the method of uh, sections, joint B, we take point B, we put our known of 500 newtons, and then we put our two unknowns. One is the force uh, BA, the other is the force BC, and we figure out the angle that exists between them, which is 45 degrees. This free body diagram of joint B, we then create equations of equilibrium for. This is a point that we're looking at, so we have two equations that we can work with if we're analyzing a point, the sum of the forces in the X direction and the sum of the forces in the Y direction. Let's start here with the sum of the forces in the X direction. Assuming going to the right is positive, it'll be 500 Newtons minus the component of FBC, so FBC times the sine of 45 degrees, and then we'll set that equal to zero. Our second equation, the sum of the forces, assuming going up is positive, we'll take the component of FBC that's in the Y direction, so that's FBC cosine of 45 degrees, and then we'll subtract FBA, which is directed in the, y, in the negative Y direction. We'll set that equal to zero, and now we have two equations. And in these two equations, we can see in red here that there are two unknowns. With two equations and two unknowns, are we cleared to solve? Do we have the right number of equations and unknowns to solve? Yes, we do. With two equations and two unknowns, we can go ahead and apply algebra to solve for those unknowns. We'll take the first equation, solve for, B, for F, B, C, Plug that answer into the second equation, solve for FBA. FBC ends up being 707.1 newtons, and that would be in compression. FBA would be equal to 500 newtons, and that's in tension. Now, how do we know what's in tension and what is in compression? How do we define tension or compression? Well, when we're creating this diagram, we are using the joint. The joint itself is our reference frame. So we're saying that FBC and FBC, the member FBC exerts a load into joint B. That means that that BC is confined. That means that it's under compression, the actual member uh, BC, right? 
What about FBA? Well, in the diagram, uh, FBA is pulling. It is uh, uh, creating a pulling motion on the joint B, at, at that point B. Well, that would mean that the member BA is in tension, and that's why it is pulling on joint B, right? If we And if we want to even simplify further, point B, what's going into it? Compression. What's coming out of it? Tension, right? So we've analyzed joint B. We understand what's tension and compression. Let's continue with other joints. We, we, so we know everything at joint B. Let's move on to joint C here, where now we have two unknowns, the CY and the force uh, uh, AC. And we have one known, which is this force BC that we just saw for. So let's analyze this joint uh, C here. We start with creating a free body diagram for that joint where we put our known FBC, we put our two unknowns, CY and FAC, right? We put the dimensional information, so we got this angle of 45 degrees, and then we're going to create equations of equilibrium for this joint. Let's start with the sum of the forces in the X direction. And what we'll find is that there is a component of FBC, uh, which is FBC cosine 45 degrees, that's going to be a positive component, minus FAC, which is in the negative x direction. We set that equal to zero. And then we'll do the sum of the forces in the y direction, assuming upwards is positive we'll find CY is in the positive Y direction minus a component of FBC, which is FBC sine, the 45 degrees. We'll set that equal to zero. And now again, what do we have? Two equations, two unknowns. We can solve this system of equations. They're, they're both just direct. Solve equation one for FAC, Solve equation two for CY. FAC ends up being 500 newtons in tension. So it's tension carried in that member. And CY, the support, is 500 newtons. All right. Now let's do our last joint in this example, and that is joint A. If we go up, that is this last joint here. If we look at this joint, the unknowns that we have are AX and AY, and the knowns that we're bringing in, that we're carrying over, is the force AC, which we just solved, as well as the force uh, um, B, uh, force AB, which we had solved uh, in the previous um, joint as well, right? So let's analyze this joint A. All right, moving down here. Joint A, oh, this is perfect. Joint A is going to be simple for us. All of our forces are directed uh, in either the positive X, uh, I mean, in either the X or Y direction. So let's just put them all together here. The knowns we have, FAC, FAB, our unknowns, AX, AY. We create our equations of equilibrium for the joint, so some of the forces in X, some of the forces in Y, and we solve to find that AX is equal to negative 500 newtons, and AY is equal to negative 500 newtons. All right, so we've analyzed all of the members in this system and found their magnitudes, so how much load they're carrying, whether it's tension or compression, and using the method of joints, we were able to find our support reactions uh, in this problem. So this uh, problem here is done, fairly straightforward. It's good for us to review what we did. We wanted to determine the forces in the truss of members, indicate tension or compression, we created a free body diagram of our entire system 
and identified the knowns and unknowns in that free body diagram, but also overall. We figured out that with the method of joints, we can use that method directly in this problem to solve for all of our unknowns. And then we started with joint B, where there was at least one uh, external load and at the most two unknowns, and we started to solve for the unknowns joint by joint, joint B, joint C, and joint A, until we had found the, what we were looking for for all of our unknowns. So we finished this problem, and now it's on to the next one.